Did you know that 17% of Americans have some kind of hearing loss? This is David at Audio Acoustics, and today we're going to discuss a couple of different hardy hearing systems that can be installed in the different types of sound system configurations that are, we commonly sell. The hardy hearing systems that we install allow for precision and clarity to be delivered right to the ear of the person with hard of hearing. So let's look at a couple of these different types of sound systems that we sell and see if we can show you how easy it is to install them in your sound system. When installing a hard of hearing system into our sound system, there's only really three different components that we have to worry about. We have the source, we have the transmitter, and we have the receivers that are scattered out through the audience. This is most complicated of the two we're going to talk about, this mixer amplifier, because there's no real good output that we can use to feed the transmitter. So what we can do, though, is add a RDL 70, a TX70A transformer in between the 70 volt output and the line level needs of our transmitter. Now the Decade transmitter operates on regular FM bands at a low power setting. Uh, the FM bands that you are commonly used in your car, in your home, uh, those same frequencies can be uh, used inside the building and allow for hard of hearing systems to uh, utilize those frequencies. No license is required to operate these at low levels. So how we hook this up is we take a regular audio cable. Um, in this case, I've got one that is about 10 feet long, and so we'll cut it off. We'll cut off this end here because we don't need it. We'll cut that right there, and we'll connect it to two terminals of our 70-volt amplifier, 70-volt in the common. So they're connected there. Then take whatever length that you need to to get up to your transformer and connect the two audio cables to the uh, input side of the transformer. Then we take the other end of the cable that we've cut right here and go ahead and use it to connect to the output of the transformer. And then we've got the other end of our cable that can plug directly into the transmitter. And basically we're done. This has a volume control that we can adjust the volume uh, that hits the transmitter. And then of course we've got the uh, settings that we can use on the MS100 to uh, adjust the input gain levels as well. Watching our lights, make sure that we don't overmodulate, but we want to make sure that this is uh, blinking, not blinking, but uh, 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 flickering, I guess is the best word to put it. Just a little bit to show that we are hitting it as hard as we can without going into, into overmodulation. And then basically that's how you can hook up one of these to a 70 volt package amplifier. The other type of sound system that is commonly installed is when we use a mixer amplifier and a separate power amplifier. When we use a mixing console like this one here, it's the Yamaha MG166C, which uh, many of our customers are familiar with. It has uh, many different inputs and outputs, so we can always find some way of connecting it to our uh, peripheral devices and be able to provide signal for them. So this is actually a lot easier from the installer's point of view. And in, and in fact, with good training, it's also a lot easier to use uh, for the operator as well. But that's for another discussion. Now, what we want to do is get the signal from all those microphones and, and music sources and stuff that we've got in our sound system over to the transmitter so that those with the hearing loss can go ahead and enjoy the program as well. The best thing to do is to find an output that's available on our board. Now this particular board has uh, three aux sends, and those are at the right levels, but aux one is a pre-fader send. And what that means is that it's going to get signal and send it out that jack irregardless of what this is doing. It's pre-fader. So whatever comes in goes right back out. That's not going to work for most applications, and uh, so we won't use the aux one. But aux two is post fader, meaning that if this fader is off, then there's no signal from this input going out that aux two jack. So we'll take our regular audio cable, and we'll use, I like the right angled connectors for the board, because it keeps a low profile on the uh, mixing board. 
and basically it's just a plug and play situation. We'll go over to our transmitter, which is again the MS100, and we plug it in to the source like that. Now, we got to keep in mind that each one of these inputs has an aux to send saying that, okay, this channel, this channel, this channel, I want to send to that output. Now, in a lot of applications, you're going to find that all the channels need to go to the hard of hearing system. And so we need to make sure that we turn up the aux to send on each one of the channels that we want the hard of hearing folks to be able to hear just like that. And like any other output, it also has a master output, which is this volume here, that gives it overall uh, level control over all these as well. And once we get that all dialed in, we'll be able to see the light on the front of our decade unit, not over modulating. We'll adjust that to where it's just better, barely flickering a little bit. And we basically install our uh, decade MS100 transmitter or any other hard of hearing system that uses a line level input. So we hope that these two videos have allowed you to see how easy it is to provide a valuable service to those with hearing loss, those 17% of the audience in general with hearing loss, and so that they can enjoy the program as much as those with, uh, without hearing difficulties. Thank you for watching.